could be the best Star Wars ever. Oh, no, no. Oh, what? Oh, f off. <laughs> what? Save what we love. Oh, well, that sucked. Oh my god, Empire would have gone roasted. If you look at the criticisms of Last Jedi. If you do like Last Jedi, or even if you love it, great. No one can take that away from you. I, and I think most people have a problem with Last Jedi or the direction of Star Wars, don't have a problem with you liking it. <laughs> Our issue is here. With this guy and this guy. Let's jump in and look at some of the stupid things that are said by The Last Jedi Defenders. It's made for children and man babies. The idea was simply to do a high adventure film that I loved when I was a kid with meaningful psychological themes. Yes, George has said he set out to make films for 12 year olds. That was his target audience. Don't confuse his intention with the outcome. Check out how child friendly he made the films. What does made for children even mean? What are you trying to tell me that people of all ages don't enjoy these films? Look at these Star Wars crowds, mostly adults. Clearly his audience moved beyond his original intention. The fact is, Star Wars is out of this world. So even though George created something that connected with people all over the world, of any age, you still get these idiots. This is a film about space wizards intended for children. No oh, way! Oh, I cannot believe it, the guy is a wanker! Lucas might have aimed at teenagers, but he touched something in all of us. Though someone should have warned the kids that in 40 years time, Ryan Johnson would be calling them assholes. If you can't defend the film, just shout man baby. The thing I find most ridiculous about the name calling is when it comes from people connected to Disney, people who rely on fan income for their career. <coughs> Freddie Prince Jr. voiced a character on Star Wars Rebels. His whole career is straight out of the pop culture handbook. Teen films, Scooby-Doo, writing for the WWE. Wait. What the fuck? The man he took playing in the backyard into a career choice. He must respect the fans. Nope. He doesn't even have to be provoked. Whether it's hating white dudes, fat shaming, implying misogyny, or just generally feeling superior. Winky face. That hurts, Freddy. <laughs> but don't worry, Freddy also thinks Scooby-Doo should be taught in schools. In American literature, and I don't care what anybody, it is, it's lit, it should be taught in schools. Okay, whatever. If you needed more proof of the lack of control Kathleen Kennedy has at Lucasfilm, just look at Ryan Johnson's behavior on Twitter. Bob Iger must be so impressed. His biggest grave decision each day seems to be whether to call someone a man baby or asshole. Yep, that's what professionals do now. If they get any criticism, throw tantrums. Shut up! Shut up! Also, stop playing the nerd card. Nerds now rule the world. She was genuinely a nerd like someone who I would have actually hung out with in high school. Are all nerds as good as you? Yes. <laughs> what do they hope to achieve with all this name calling? I have no idea. You just don't like change. What did Last Jedi bring that was new? I'll give you a minute. <laughs> These things? The three original movies were all very different to each other. The characters grew, the environments changed, and there was always something new to look forward to. New Hope blew us away, but I'll never forget the first time the AT-ATs appeared. It was incredible. A lot of people see the OT as a set, but when they came out, each was their own adventure. Desert, space, snow, forest. It was all new. Then came the prequels where George expanded on his creation. No matter what you think of the dialogue or acting, the visuals are amazing and ahead of their time. George had ideas. Ryan, not so much. <laughs> Thank you.
And don't forget, the two biggest changes, Jedi training means nothing now. You just have it, and the Empire slash First Order aren't scary. If you don't like it, just stop watching. Just leave. Uh, no. Just because Disney have a large checkbook doesn't mean they should automatically be given a tick of approval. This isn't George with a story that's been carrying around for years and an original vision. This is a corporation that are trying to milk money out of something that has been loved for 40 years. George did it because he was crazy. Ryan is no creator. He was hired to shape a story that fitted with Kathleen Kennedy's narrative. He was also on limited time, something even he has stated he would be terrible at. Uh, I, I, I think I, I don't think I could ever like actually write for a living, like write for hire, because I, I take so long to write and I just... Uh, um, it's bad, man. It's no good. Try this as an example. Let's say I don't follow football, but I decide that Manchester United look exciting. I go to my first match and I sit next to these lifelong three generation supporters. They aren't happy with the team's performance and think the new management are idiots. I proceed to tell them, as a new supporter, that they should just stop watching football or find another team or just generally go away because you're not wanted anymore. My new fellow supporters then proceed to kick the living shit out of me. Would they be wrong to do so? Maybe the old fans have some weight to what they say. Maybe they've experienced the club at its best and want to see them continue being their best. People didn't like Empire. Yeah, Damn Empire man. would have gone roasted. If you look at the criticisms of Last Jedi, can you imagine what they would have said about Luke just getting his ass handed to him by right. Vader and, and like Han Solo and that goes down without a fight and just gets... Um, Ryan, I'm gonna have to call bullshit on that one. Maybe, uh, ask around. Channel 2 News has learned that arts editor Dennis Cunningham loves the film. He's torn between an eight and a nine. I'm not a critic or even a movie buff. I loved it. Those who hate such stuff, go kiss a Wookiee. <laughs> you don't even have to go back to 1980. I know kids that recently watched Empire for the first time after only ever seeing Star Wars. They loved it all. Ooh, voted best film of all time. Where do you get your facts, Ryan? One of cinema's greatest films, and Ryan doesn't understand it. Brilliant! Get this guy a Star Wars movie. Also, Ryan, Empire did something your film failed to do. It created a huge excitement and anticipation for the next movie. Judging from the response across North America this week, Mr. Lucas has another big winner. We've been here for six days and it's great! In Canada, devotees turned out en masse, and theater owners see The Return of the Jedi as a kind of box office third coming. Films have problems, and no films are perfect. I see people use this one a lot to defend the massive plot holes or even the whole Canto bite scenes in Last Jedi. As a defense of the worst scenes, they say, all films have problems, and then they reference like a Marvel film from four years ago as their argument. That's their gauge. There are thousands of films that are so close to perfect. Then there are many films that I would say are perfect. And when I say perfect, they give you the perfect viewing experience. Whether that's fun, exciting, dramatic, sad, scary, it's all in the execution. What was Last Jedi? Wasn't fun, wasn't exciting, the story was thin, the less said about Canto Bite the better. And please, the overrated throne room scene is amateurish at best. This doesn't mean you can't find mistakes in great films, it means that the storytelling outweighs any holes. Great films usually don't crap all over their own universe in telling a story, or have a whole 30 minute section that most people would agree should be cut out. Canto Bite, fuck, <laughs> what a joke. Even the defenders have given up on this one. The whole sub story was terrible. The needle left? Yes, I know, the shark looks fake. The doc probably would have killed Marty. Like space wizards, cyborgs don't exist. Michael should have... Oh, oh wait, hey, sorry, that's a mistake. That film is perfect. Then you have Last Jedi, where the whole film rests on a chase that doesn't make sense in the Star Wars universe. Genius. And at a budget of $250 million, it's a disgrace. You just don't understand it. Yes, we do. It's no primer. If someone couldn't follow Last Jedi, I'd really have to question their ability to get to the cinema and back without hurting themselves or killing someone else. If you read the graphic novel, Ray downloads Kylo's training. What? Hyperspace would be too expensive as a weapon. Again, what? I've never seen a film that needs so much external help. Why, why can't we talk about the plot holes? Because if we start talking about it, then we're going to be here all day talking about it, making diagrams with straws. It doesn't matter. I no, it does matter. It's, it's bad writing. It doesn't matter! Diversity in women scare you. Star Wars for the first time is losing money. And I hate to tell you this, but it's losing money all over the world. All types of people didn't go to see Solo. Stop ignoring these other cultures and women who didn't like where Star Wars is heading. Is there really a fight? Are people more racist now than, say, the 80s? Are we more scared of women? I don't think so. 
Hollywood make their own rules and problems. They decide who can be a star and who can't. Is there anywhere else Harvey, Bill and Kevin could get away with their behaviour? You disgusting, pill-popping, sexual deviant scum. No, Hollywood's a special place and when something goes wrong, they need to blame someone. Also, have some respect for the people that did have to fight to make it in times that were a lot harder than now. Star Wars has the most toxic fan base. No, the world has some toxic people and they can be found anywhere. Thank you. Every person in the public eye receives some type of abuse. Yep, it's sad, but not all humans are lovely. The trouble with Hollywood is they pull this card when it suits them. Movie bombing, quick. Look at the hate the actors are getting. Daisy Ridley quits Instagram because of toxic fans. Nope. Kelly Marie Tran, who knows? No one wants to ask her. Kelly did though release an article talking about her experiences growing up and the treatment of women like her in Hollywood. But not once does she mention social media. But hey, that's not gonna stop the New York Times pushing Disney's PR spin. The studios are not gonna take the blame. It's the fans' fault. And even if it's true, so she turned off Instagram. And with the carry-on, man, I thought they turned off her life support. The dream job with a good paycheck should uh, make up for some name calling, you know, uh, sticks and stones and all that. And if she thinks that her life would have been without nutcases if she wasn't a movie star, think again. I know a lot of people that would swap positions. Do you think this guy's having a good day at work? I don't know if I have any advice for that, uh, but just, you know, don't take it too seriously because uh, unfortunately those are the ones that make the most noise, but uh, the majority of the people don't feel that way, so keep that in mind. They did the same with Armored Best. You know, one Jar Jar Binks. Armored seems like a nice guy. He recently tweeted about his struggles with the media and Hollywood since Phantom Menace. No mention of fans, but wait, the shills know better. Step up, Brian Young. One of the biggest shills of them all. And guess who he works for? StarWars.com seems to breed a special hate for fans. So much so, Brian, like what was done with Kelly's article, chooses to show Armored zero respect by adding his own spin to Armored story. Toxic fandom? If Brian's ego would let him read the quote, that is just under his comment. Armored never mentioned the fans. He only mentioned the media. But hey, that doesn't fit Brian's view. Yes, it's true. This man has no dick. One role doesn't make a career, nor should you let it. Geez, look at Stallone. He didn't let one bad role stop him. <laughs> Most people in the public eye haven't got the luxury of hiding behind the creators. Sports stars, musicians, anyone in the public eye. It's all them. Actors constantly playing a role. Bloop, 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 bloop. Michael Caine once was asked if he'd ever seen Jaws The Revenge, a film that he starred in. Oh, shit. He said never. I hear it's terrible. However, I have seen the house it built and that's terrific. What a legend. <laughs> what a star. Look at how much money it made. I don't think you can really judge quality by profit. Otherwise, this film's really good, I think. It's Star Wars. People buy tickets in advance to see a Star Wars film. I'm sorry, did they give out refunds to the people that hated it? Because I must have missed mine. My ticket is counted in that figure, and I think it's a terrible film. Every single person who didn't like that film is also in that total. Imagine if they had given out refunds. Imagine how much money it would have made then. Would have been slightly lower. I'm sorry, I made a bad mistake. You're fucking right you made a bad mistake. It blows my mind that some people can't get their head around this one. I bought my ticket because of this awesome man? I thought I was going to see Luke Skywalker, not some pathetic loser. I also was mistaken to think that maybe some of the questions that JJ set up would be explored. We were taken for a ride. We were sold a piece of junk as a Star Wars film. Mark Hamill himself has tried to warn us. He knew. He knew what was going on. Uh, I said to him, I totally disagree with what you... <laughs> <laughs> Think about Luke. He looked like he was going to be sick at the premiere. Look at that face. Is this a man that thinks he just watched a great movie? Sorry you didn't get the story you wanted. Ah, I remember it well. Going to see Empire Strikes Back with my little checklist of things I had to see to be satisfied. Huge four-legged walking tank things. Oh, little green puppet that is really wise. Oh, and, and I want to love him. I want a weird scene where Luke sees himself as Vader. Uh, Luke gets his hand cut off. Oh, and I want a big surprise. What if Ben is Luke's father? No, wait, fuck it. Make it Vader. Luckily, there was no surprises. George had guessed everything I'd wanted. Now, it doesn't work that way. We don't have a pre-written checklist. We want the wonder, the excitement. 
We want to be taken on a ride. We want that different story. The thing was, that's not Last Jedi. Last Jedi is like going to see a bad cover band. You know you should like it and you sort of recognise the songs, but... <laughs> Bonus solo round. Stop saying no one went to Solo because of time of release and Star Wars fatigue. You'd be, how much would you be, be willing to sell that ticket for now, now that you've gotten it? Um, presently I wouldn't. Fatigue? What the fuck? People see Star Wars films multiple times. I'll go week after week to see the same film. You think they wouldn't go if there was a different film every month? You know, Roy saw Star Wars 317 times. What a joke. The Marvel fans are laughing at you. Hang on, they're the same people. Now it really doesn't make sense at all. Find me one person who didn't go because of fatigue or time of release, and I'll show you thousands of people who didn't go because of Last Jedi. And if I'm wrong, I'm sure Ryan will get his three picture Star Wars deal. Is the idea of doing a new story on the big canvas of three movies in this world? <laughs> Yes. Yeah, they're not going to happen. He's not making any more Star Wars films. You're demoted. Pretend we're having an argument. So, there are some of the crazy things that people say when they are defending Last Jedi. I'm sure the list will keep on growing. I'm sure the fanboys' tears mugs won't be the last stupid thing we see. It's sad how people will buy a corporation spin. Like Last Jedi all you want. No one's stopping me loving Nicolas Cage. And that love is strong. But if you're buying into all this crap regarding diversity, misogyny, man babies, open your eyes, look around. It was fans, not haters, that didn't like this film and showed it by having no interest in Solo. You, Last Jedi Defender, you are the perfect Disney consumer. You buy all their crap. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. 